And so, on Easter weekend, Boris Johnson, our Prime Minister, has risen from the dead just like Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Hallelujah. <laughs> on leaving intensive care, Boris Johnson thanked the doctors and nurses who saved his life, saying that the NHS is powered by love, which I'm sure is true, although 350 million a week probably wouldn't hurt either. Which is not in itself to be sneezed at. All of us are incredibly grateful to him for taking one for the herd. It's hard to find words to express my debt. And becoming a victim of his own policy of keeping calm and carrying corona on. Whether or not his ageing supporters will feel the same remains to be seen. The virus may wipe out 15% of over 80 year olds who predominantly voted in the referendum to take back control of our borders, only to see Boris leave them wide open during a deadly global pandemic when all of Europe shut down theirs. Take back control. If we take back control... It seems that Boris Johnson's main appeal today has been his jokey irreverence, casting him as the naughty schoolboy standing up to the joyless, rule-obsessed EU. All very fun and exciting, until you have a plague, that is. At which point it becomes fucking terrifying that Horrid Henry is the number one adult in the country. <laughs> Conversely, the likes of Germany and South Korea presumably have actual adults in charge because they did the kind of boring, responsible things that adults do, like taking adequate precautions. Yawn. I think when all this is over, Boris Johnson's middle name, De Feffel, should be used by everyone to describe a messy and bungled response to a deadly global crisis. Oh, he's De Feffled it up again because despite endless warnings from epidemiologists, Britain has left it all to the last minute, like no doubt Boris Johnson did his homework, forcing us to panic by ventilators, tests and personal protective equipment. Boris can, of course, defend his failure in this crisis just like he does his 2-1 from Oxford. OK, you may have a fraction of the deaths that we did, but we were hardly even trying. I was down the buller every night getting absolutely smashed. Turns out it can be quite useful to listen to experts after all. I think the people in this country have had enough of experts. Boris's estrangement from the facts is so well documented that it's a wonder he doesn't have to pay them child support. How many children do you have? Look, I am... Across the pond, they have an equally post-truth attitude to this pandemic. In the US, the response to the pandemic was put in the hands of Christian fundamentalist Mike Pence, who couldn't even find a cure for being gay. Pence's boss slash secret crush has spent the last four years of his presidency building an emperor's new wall to protect the American people from a completely non-existent threat whilst disbanding his pandemic preparedness team and even firing the director who warned of a flu-like virus sweeping across America. But while Donald Trump lacks in medical expertise, he makes up off the top of his head, bloviating about hunches and how the virus would be cured like a miracle and promoting unproven treatments against the advice of his own medical experts. I'm not a doctor, but I have common sense. And like a British own brand discount Donald Boris has spent the last four years misidentifying threats to the British people, only to find, surprise, surprise, that a deadly pandemic virus turned out to be more of a defethyl than a bendy banana. Kipper. In October 2016, when we were all slightly distracted trying to work out what this Brexit thing was that we just voted for, British medical experts conducted a flu pandemic drill, the results of which were so terrifying that they still haven't been publicly released. It's odd that we spent years focusing all our brain power on a baffling national riddle and we could have spent that time preparing ourselves for a deadly virus. No, Boris Johnson clearly isn't the kind of weak-minded individual that allows himself to get brainwashed by experts. He wasn't even able to follow his own advice to work from home, despite the fact that his office is literally his home. Instead, he spent the lockdown defeffling around Parliament and hospitals without a mask or gloves. I was at a hospital the other night where there were actually a few coronavirus uh, patients and I shook hands with everybody, uh, you'll be pleased to know. And the last time the UK saw him, he was on the steps of number 10, giving the clap to a bunch of people he'd fucked over with a lack of protective equipment. No change there then. He looked rather thin and gaunt, but we all just assumed that the one precaution our notoriously clumsy and evidently hungry Prime Minister had taken was to reduce his three second rule to one and a half seconds. <laughs> But, as is often the case with the Eton plutocracy, Boris has once again landed on his feet on the same day that 953 of his fellow Britons died from the virus. The highest single death tolls to date have been 950 in Spain and 919 in Italy, and both countries have been in lockdown a lot longer than us. Perhaps when this is all over, a press conference pointlessly fronted by an overgrown man-child flanked by two experts who actually know what they're talking about will be the image that comes to represent how we got governments wrong. All over the world, chief medical officers have become our de facto leaders, overthrowing prime ministers and presidents in bloodless scientific coup d'etat. From Chris Whitty dethroning Dominic Cummings, to Dr Anthony Fauci openly contradicting Trump without getting fired, to Professor Brett Sutton replying directly to Australians on Twitter with advice on how to interpret the vague federal lockdown laws. These are the people that we're turning to, not politicians. Perhaps the experts are back and all it took was a single horseman of the apocalypse. Unfortunately, his other three mates are close on his heels. And yet scientists and doctors 
Others are treated like Cassandras when they predict mass famine due to rising temperatures and crop failure, or when they predict mass death due to antibiotic resistance because our farmers are stuffing antibiotics into fucking cattle feed. If a huge asteroid big enough to destroy all life on Earth were hurtling towards us, only a madman would say, quick, we must protect the economy. And yet this has been exactly the attitude of our leaders to equally existential threats such as climate and ecological breakdown. Surely the social contract is broken when our leaders fail to protect us because they've misidentified what the threats are. Our government is spending twice as much on the military as it is on climate and ecological breakdown, and hundreds of times more than they're spending on pandemic preparedness, as we're seeing right now. And yet, nobody genuinely thinks China's about to invade us. This crisis has shown us that when there's political will, pretty much anything can be done and pretty much any amount of money can be found somewhere lying under the sofa. Our Tory government is currently throwing money at the unemployed, forgiving NHS debt, nationalising the railways and taking the homeless off the streets. So far, Corona is succeeding pretty much everywhere Jeremy Corbyn failed and it didn't even need to win the argument. If there's the political will and the money for these things during a health crisis, then there's no reason there shouldn't be the political will and the money for a huge Green New Deal style shift towards renewables and a reallocation of these massive military budgets towards science and education, because the environmental crisis is first and foremost also a health crisis. Yeah? Because we're gonna die. This is a precarious moment for humanity and the planet, that as we sit gathering dust in our homes, the world outside is changing faster and more tectonically than it has in most of our lifetimes. Things could change for the better, or they could go very, very badly indeed. It's Easter weekend and praise the Lord, Boris Johnson has risen from the dead, but he's not the Messiah, he's just a very, very naughty boy. And I'm not sure that's who I want leading our country forward into this very uncertain, but quite exciting future. If you want to donate money to support the intensive care professionals that Boris Johnson and the Tory party have neglected for so long, visit easydonate.org slash covid slash ICS and support the intensive care society.